Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Couch GM's podcast. This is your bonus episode. Normally, you see Cody Roadcap here. I am your host today, George Kurth. Cody is out there gambling for some fantasy points, and it's unfortunate, I guess, that his Packers did not also find some of those points, but I digress. Today, I'm going to be pulling you through week five of the Couch GM's World Cup. We're going to go over every single matchup, maybe look at some of the standings and see how we're shaking out in the first part of the fantasy regular season. I'm also going to hit some news here before we go, and we'll have the world's fastest Thursday night preview. So why don't we just jump right in and get us started? Starting off, we're going to hit some news here and... We normally see Black Tuesday at the end of the NFL season when we're talking about coaches being fired. But if there was ever an equivalent to a fantasy football Black Tuesday, I feel like it had to be this Tuesday. We had multiple injuries to stars. um, And it's funny how even maybe the least, you know, relevant star to get injured is Anthony Richardson. Obviously, he's been in and out, but when he has been playing, he's been a monster. But he is now out indefinitely with his shoulder injury. So if you were relying on him as like a backup quarterback type option, maybe you have to start looking elsewhere for bye weeks because bye weeks are coming up here. We already did start them in week five, and I'm sure we'll get to some of that in the World Cup recap as well. Um, But the big three, first off, we go Justin Jefferson. His hamstring injury made him miss part of the game on Sunday. He now is on the injured reserve, will miss at least four weeks, and then they will reevaluate him to see if he is able to come back that fifth week or not. I mean, we saw a hamstring injury for someone like Cooper Cup as well. He missed, I think it was two or three weeks in the preseason, but then re-injured it. So it's kind of good in a way that Justin Jefferson is getting the time to go out there and heal, but we know hamstrings can linger. So little bit sketchy if you're a Jefferson owner, especially because you probably took him first overall to miss him in a four week stretch. It's tough. And for the Vikings being at one win right now, these next few games are crucial. They're against some tough opponents. They're going to miss Justin Jefferson. Next one, Devon Achan. We did learn recently that his name is actually now pronounced Achan, not a chain. He did change that. So sorry, last week after we had already heard that news, he did change it before that, but Devin A. Chan running back for the Miami Dolphins. He was starting to take over for Raheem Mostert in that backfield. He now is going to injured reserve with his knee injury that he sustained in that game. Not a lot to say about that backfield other than it's probably going to be the Mostert show again. So in fantasy, if you're someone who rolled with Mostert so far, he's probably right back in your lineup. For anyone who went out there and tried to grab A. Chan to be your savior, He's probably going to be back later in the year and should be fine. We're hoping that it's only going to be a four-week absence. We will know more, hopefully, by the Thursday show. And I'm sure Tyler and I will discuss more on that injury if we know more. And then finally, James Conner as well. He left a game early due to an injury. He is going to IR. He will miss four weeks. And we had a very interesting fill-in there with Amari DeMarcado, a name I know I hadn't heard of until this season, this, this week. He was actually near the top in running back snap percentage after James Conner left with injury, scored a touchdown, was pretty effective with his 10 carries. Probably your top waiver wire grab this week if you are hearing this before waivers clear. If not, if he happened to sneak through, great ad and free agency. So make sure you go check out your league on that situation. But James Conner to IR, if you were relying on him, we have to wait four weeks. Hopefully he will come back strong. But we'll see if the Cardinals rush him back, knowing that they are Not a team that's expecting to contend. We're already not expecting to bring back Kyler Murray. So they're probably not going to rush back someone like James Conner, who is an older back. Probably not a big part of their future. While someone like Dave Marcato might be, he might be getting a huge uptick, even if Conner comes back later in the year. But time remains to be, time will tell for that one. We're all here to talk some Couch GM's World Cup. So why don't we jump into that segment? All right, Couch GM's World Cup, while I get this set up right here, if you do not know what the Couch GM's World Cup is, it is a 30-team fantasy league that me and the boys of the Couch GM's put together. We are 
trying to find who will be the best fantasy player over a four year span. So it's three years of 10 team redraft leagues. They get shuffled every single year. And then the, the winners of those leagues and then top performers outside of that will move into a 10 team league. That will be for the world cup for the title for the jackpot. So why don't we see how everything's breaking out so far? We're going to look at how week five broke down. Let me get my screen set up here. Cody is pretty good at this at this point. This is the first time I have done it. So if you're also, if you're not listening on, if you're listening on podcast, make sure you can check us out in video format on our, you can check us out in video format on our Spotify. Sorry about that. Um, or you can check us out on YouTube. You will see the actual matchups on your screen. But first matchup, we are in World Cup Group A, which is Tyler's group. And Couch Jams, I think, did a little bit well this week. You're going to see that. Tyler starting it off strong with a 125.84 to 61.18 victory over Kempe. So the Tyler versus Tyler matchup this week. Tyler improving to 2 and 3. And Kempe falling to 3 and 2. If we take a look at the scores here, Tyler started Jared Goff with a solid 27 points. Uh, Christian McCaffrey didn't have his best week, but it didn't seem to matter. Josh Jacobs, 17, Calvin Ridley, 17, Alvin Kamara, who I think he is very happy to have back. Also at 17, maybe you should play 17 in the lottery or something with after those scores or seven in general with the 27 up there. Just a solid week all around for Tyler to put up 125 over on Kempe's side of the ball. He actually messaged me before I went on live here just to talk about how decimated his team got. He did not have to worry about replacing the Aaron Jones situation. I don't think he had anybody that could have played on Monday anyway because he was so far down that that's one you just kind of eat it. Um, Jordan Love had a bad game as well, so that would not have helped either. But Aaron Jones been dealing with injury. He's still out. James Conner hitting injured reserve. Justin Jefferson expecting to hit injured reserve. If you look down at his bench, Khalil Herbert getting hurt as well. Amra St. Brown missed this week. He's got like a starting lineup that could probably win in a lot of leagues sitting on his bench, not to mention he benched the 45 from DJ Moore on Thursday and the 32 from Justin Fields on Thursday. If you insert those two into his lineup, he would have been pretty close considering everyone seemed to bust on that team or with the injury problems, of course, except for Sam Laporta, who has been the biggest surprise tight end so far this year. So anyway, Tyler gets the victory. Moving on to our second matchup, really high scoring one here. Ryan finally getting in the win column over Colin with a great 143.02 score, beating Collins 128.92. Both teams now one and four. If we talk about breaking it down a little bit here, Jalen Hurts leading off with 27 points for Ryan. He also had George Pickens get 23. The Saints defense, that's probably one we're going to see. If anyone did play them, that was a huge help at 24 points, especially when you put them against someone like the commanders at negative one on the other side here. Um, Travis Kelsey, 17. Gabe Davis with a 19 point performance. Like, he didn't really get too much special out of the running backs and his wide receivers actually didn't even break 10, but the flex plays, the defense, the quarterback play really put him over the top, flipping it over to Colin's side here. Stefan Diggs at 20 Christian Watson got himself 10 on Monday. Dallas Goddard had a breakout performance, not to uh, toot my own horn here, but I did tell people to stick with Goddard one more week. Now we saw him break out. We'll see how much he stays involved in the Eagles offense. This is a very solid score. It's hard to lose scoring 128 points, especially when it puts you down to one and four. But solid team here, especially as you see Watson coming back. And if Goddard can keep this up, if he can fix that running back situation, I'm Tajay Spears putting up 14. He's been a surprise. Excuse me, but. Tyler Algier is the other running back on the bench. There's just not a lot of help having the Jameer Gibbs problem. Rashad White was on a bye and Saquon Barkley. There's the help actually right there. White and Barkley probably starters most weeks. So help on the way for a one and four team. Pretty solid coming together. We'll see how it keeps up, but it's tough to take a loss with 128. Good job by Ryan to get on the board with his first win. Matchup three in group A. Cameron taking down Andrew T. 
don't worry, Andrew, I actually got you covered. I'll make sure I say which Andrew it is and be the correct one. But not a good week for you. Maybe you wish it was Andrew S. that was out here putting up this score. Uh, 74 points on his end, 116.94 to Cam. Cam improves to 3-2. and two. Andrew is falling to 3-2, and two, so still very even there on that side. On Cam's side, led by Josh Allen and Brees Hall. Brees Hall, another one who has been struggling. I'm sure you're probably going to see at least one or two leagues here that someone has him on their bench because he's been so bad. But Cody mentioned it last week. They finally, Jets finally said that they're taking the leash off. He has no longer on a snap count. And man, did he ball out when he should have against the Broncos defense that has been very bad. But 26.9 is a big breakout. He has led the 49ers defense at 18. Drake London broke 10. Raheem Mostert, who might be a nice little spark plug for him going forward. Other side of the ball, it was just studs that just didn't really quite do it at the top. Lamar Jackson only getting nine. Unfortunate for his collapse at the end of that game. Derrick Henry only had seven, so he struggled to start. We thought he was going to break back out. Turns out there has not been snow in Vermont yet. So he's still got to wait a little bit of time there. We also saw Tajay Spears on a team here already who was out scoring him. Very interesting backfield dynamic in Tennessee. Ramondre Stevenson only got two. Hunter Henry got shut out. Uh, Jaden Reed with only 1.2 on Monday. Just It looks like Zach Moss could have been a fill-in, but again, I don't know how much Zach Moss is going to help going forward, seeing that Jonathan Taylor's back. Moss still got 80% of the touches, or should I say snaps, in week five. I don't think that's going to keep up, but he has actually been really good, surprisingly. Um, We just don't know if he's going to keep getting the volume to stay effective. Um, Had Deshaun Watson and Tyler Lockett on by as well. Josh Palmer. Um... So a little bit of a tough week for Andrew T, but Cam comes out with the victory. Game four in group A, we had Sean. I might be top scorer of the week, not 100% sure, but 177. Might actually be top scorer of the year so far. I'm sure a lot of the guys on this team are going to be guys we see on winning teams in the other two leagues as well. He beat Andrew S, 98.18 points on his side. It's amazing when you put up 98 and still almost get beat by 100. About 80 points right there. That's crazy. So who had Sean up to 177 points? That would be Russell Wilson, 18. That's not even the most impressive. Travis Etienne, 34. Um, Apparently, he really likes playing over in London, put in two touchdowns and a two-point conversion. A-chain with 21 before he left with injury. So we'll see how he ha- who he has on the bench to fill in for that. But Jamar Chase finally had his breakout three touchdown, hundred or sorry, forty four point seven point performance. David Montgomery nineteen point nine can slot in that running back two spot right now. He even played Jonathan Taylor at three point nine and still put up one hundred and seventy seven points. Jets defense got nineteen is another thing in there. Absolutely dominant performance right there from Sean. And on his bench, he still had Christian Kirk at eleven. And he has Justin Herbert, who is on by. He is a force to be reckoned with potentially. And it's funny because he is only two and three. We'll see if he can keep that up. Andrew S's side of the ball. Matt Stafford had 16. Hollywood Brown, 14. Puka Nakua continues, even though Cooper Cup is back, putting up 16.6. And Jaleel McLaughlin, who is somebody that I'm keeping an eye on, even with the chance that Javante Williams comes back on Thursday, 16.4. He now has, I believe it's four touchdowns in the first five games as a rookie. It's three or four. Very impressive, even though he's playing second fiddle in that offense at running back. But just didn't quite get enough from some guys like James Cook, Kyron Williams, Tony Pollard this week. Uh, 98 points, not super bad week, not something to freak out about. He falls to three and two, so he's still in the driver's seat in second place in this league. And Sean moves up to seventh. One more matchup, and it involved the one five and O team, or sorry, four and O team left in this league. Greg falling in a heartbreaker to Nick. Final score ninety six to ninety four, losing by a whole two point three points basically. Checking out what happened here for Greg. It's. It's tough when you're like, you need to find two points, and you saw Devontae Smith get 1.1. C.D. Lamb gets 6.9. Cowboys defense, who 
have been dominant to the point of being like quarterback seven running back. I think it was four wide receiver two, something like that. Getting negative one against San Francisco. That is what really hurt Greg this week. And if you, if you look at it, if he would have played George Kittle in tight end or a flex spot, he would have won. That's the only thing he could have done differently besides hoping the Cowboys don't throw up negative one on their Sunday night game. So a little bit of a steal of a win with 96 points for Nick. He did have good performances from Patrick Mahomes, Kyle Pitts breaking out, sticking with it, even though a lot of us are giving up. And he actually was near the top of the league in targets this week. So go figure every time we try to give up on Kyle Pitts, he always comes back and tries to prove us wrong. And we also had Joe Mixon, B. John Robinson breaking 10 and the Bills defense at 10. So there you go. That is group A. With it being week five, why don't we take a quick look at the standings and see where we're falling here. Currently, still got Greg in the lead. Despite his loss at 4-1, and one, he is the only 4-1 and one team in the league. And then we have a log jam, 2-6 through six at 3-2 and two between Andrew S. Um, we got Sean. I'm testing my names, my team names here. Kempe, Andrew T, and Nick. That's your current playoff spots. We do have Tyler and Sean one game out, and it's not over for the one in four teams. If you are even a one in four team in another league, do not give up here. We see even it's only two games and you still have like half or more, more than half of a fantasy season to go. I am transitioning over, over to group B, checking out our second couch jam matchup, Cody, where he pulled off a 144 to 90 victory. Take a quick look at what we got here. I'm sorry, that victory was over Hayden. I had to check that for a second here. Um, he also had Brees Hall playing and Alvin Kamara. That's two te- two people we saw really leading teams in the other one. And Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is 44, obviously. I actually won a league game in our league of record with basically Jamar Chase scoring all of my points and everyone else just kind of putting up average scores. And it just happened to be enough. Sorry, can't be if you're listening in. Um AJ Brown's 15 as well. Very solid game for 144 points. Uh, Hayden's side of the ball. He still tried to stick with 2 2 Atwell. Worked out for a touchdown, but that's really the only points he scored. He only scored 7.9 on the day. Calvin Ridley, Stephon Diggs stood well at wide receiver. He still had Kirk Cousins and DeAndre Swift have solid games. But again, there's that Cowboys defense. I'm interested if the Cowboys defense is on the losing side of every single matchup. That's already two out of three that they sat here and lost. So we'll see how that goes going on to our second matchup. The fantasy Godfather, not looking like much of a Godfather right now. Marcus falls to one and four losing to Shelby at four and one 131, five, six to 82, 82. Take a look at our scores over here. Shelby is still did play James Conner at his 4.6 and still happened to pull off a victory. ETN breaking out, obviously got Cooper cup back there. Josh Allen had a solid 27, pretty solid game all around for Shelby. Looking at Marcus's side of the ball, he threw in Anthony Richardson, despite him just coming back from injury. He only got 4.42 before leaving with injury again. Tony Pollard and J- Brian Robinson only at six piece. Jacoby Myers is somebody that I feel like we haven't been paying enough attention to. He put up 17 on Monday night, something to try to carry uh, Marcus here, but it was a little bit too late on Monday. Puka Nakua, Travis Kelsey had solid games. Just a lot of mediocre efforts here for Marcus. Maybe his uh, home team fandom is showing, having the commander's defense still there as well, but I don't think any of us expect him to put up negative one against Chicago. So Marcus falling to four and one. Shelby in second place at Four, uh, sorry, Mark is at one and four in ninth. Shelby at in second place at four and one because in first place, our only undefeated team left in the Couch GM's World Cup. My fiance Bree putting up 128 to beat Neil at 113. She improves to five and oh, Neil falling to two and three and currently holding the final playoff spot. Neil needed a little bit of help on Monday from Jordan Love and from Christian Watson didn't get enough. He only got 14. He was actually projected to win coming into this game. They just did not do what they needed to do for him. 
still had David Montgomery at 19, Christian McCaffrey not having a Christian McCaffrey game at 12. Uh, but the Saints defense, 24, still fell. That's not something I expected to see, actually, in any of these. Bree had only nine from Lamar Jackson, but Devon Achan, 21. Tyreek Hill continuing to carry at 28. Those two really, along with George Kittle's three touchdown performance on Sunday night at 26, carrying her to victory. So we see she has a Chan there in her second running back spot. If you look down, she does have Ken Walker, who was on a bye to fill in that. So not too big of a hit there, except for the fact that a Chan has been so solid. But Ken Walker is a solid fill in. Also still has T Higgins on the bench, who was out this week. So team to be reckoned with still. We'll see how far that streak can go. We're currently at 5-0. and Two more games left in Group B. We got Reed pulling off a victory against Josh, 113-96. I'm sorry, this is Josh W., by the way. Um, the other Josh is in Group C, I believe. Checking out the scoring breakdown on this one. The difference, probably the Bengals defense. I don't think the Bengals defense was played in group A. Group B has them and have scored a solid 19. Decided to go with DeAndre Hopkins here as well, who had a breakout 140-yard game for the Titans. He put up 18 points as well. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes there. Sam Laporta, who has been a savior at tight end so far, especially when you put him up against Pat Fryermuth, who I believe did not end up playing, but that was kind of a last-minute decision. Also had the leaving Justin Jefferson in that lineup there. So that didn't help. Um, Joe Burrow, the leading score over here had the jets defense. <laughs> it's funny how, even though Josh had the jets defense, they got matched by the Bengals. So one of the few times where scoring 19 on defense does not actually help as it literally got canceled out exactly by the other team's defense. That one kind of hurts a little bit. And a big reason why 113 to 96 victory goes to Reed. He goes to three and two, Josh W falls to two and three. One more game here. We got Sheeler barely beating out Levan 120 to 117. Levan's tough season continues as he has another close loss to fall to 0 and 5. What could have happened here? You always point out the guys who don't perform well when you see a loss by less, by less than five points. Miles Sanders only getting 1.2 thanks to his fumble. And Tyler Higby at three on Aaron's side of the ball. If you go down, I mean, we could have played Antonio Gibson at nine. Uh, we had Dallas Goddard on the bench. That one is the one that hurts. Going into the season, we had a feeling that Dallas Goddard was in that safe group of tight ends. He's been struggling, and he was like tight end 32 coming into the week. Decided to bench him for Higby, and that is the difference in the loss. We'll see if LeVan goes back to Goddard next week, but that one hurts there. We even had Fields on the bench on the side of Sheeler, played Tua at 16, pulled off a victory thanks to DJ Moore. He could have had the Moore Fields stack on Thursday, but Moore did enough for the victory. Considering he kind of raised some guys who didn't play well, Tank Dell, Devontae Smith, Khalil Herbert, who left with injury. Solid victory there for Sheeler. Why don't we check out the standings really fast before we move on to Group C. Obviously, I did mention only undefeated team left in the World Cup. Bree is in first place. Shelby in second. And then Cody in third. So the girls leading the way with Cody. I think the highest ranking couch GM right now in third place. The rest of the playoffs right now, we got Sheeler. And we got Neil in sixth. And I have to test my skills here on names. Reed in fifth. My bad there, Reed. I am not up to speed with team names here so far. Group C, I'm going to bring this up here really quick. It is my group. And in week five, we did have the Couch GM sweep. Normally, the Couch GM sweep means we're looking at the Packers, Eagles, and Titans all winning. But in this case, it means all three Couch GMs won our Couch GMs World Cup match. I defeated the undefeated team in group C. That's Josh S., he had 91.54. I win with 115.22. My flexes kind of led the way over here. We had Marquise Brown, who was actually a free agent pickup in this league, surprisingly enough, at 14. And Adam Thielen, a free agent pickup from two weeks ago at 22. Always, guys, remember to work your waiver wire. You never know when you're going to have a situation like that come up where 
I played two flexes who were waiver wire pickups in the last three weeks, and they both put up 14 plus and helped me lead to a victory. Um, AJ Brown slid 15. Raheem Mostert, we'll see how he bounces back now being a lead back again. Uh, he's still at 14. Josh's side of the ball. He had Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel stack. They both didn't do super fantastic. 12 and 10 there. He did have Alvin Kamara leading the way at 17, but Lamar Jackson obviously only getting nine. And just not a lot of impressive performances outside of it. Garrett Wilson's been shaky. He only had 6.9. Just didn't quite get the spark he needed to break out over the 100 point mark and to get the victory. But he is still a 4 1 team. He was the one that I was actually on with Cody last week, and I didn't really love his depth. I think it still is a little shaky, so we'll see how much he can keep it up. But he's been scoring points, so there's no denying that he's still in a good spot at 4 and 1. Number two matchup in Group C features Brandon with a pretty close victory, 113 to 105 over Cole. What is the difference in this matchup? Joe Burrow over Jordan Love seems to be the big thing. Brandon came into this game, I don't think, expecting to win, seeing Love and Dobbs. Or du- yeah, Dobbs. <laughs> Sometimes I still try to say Dubs when I see Romeo Dobbs. Love and Dobbs against him. Going into Monday night, they put up a total of just under six points, and Brandon pulls off the victory by eight. That one hurts if you're Cole. And there's not much to say about otherwise you could have played Justin Fields on Thursday. That would have been majorly the difference. George Pickens down there as well. Even throwing in Christian Watson's 10 points instead of playing Dobbs would have been the difference. Maybe, excuse me, maybe not the Monday night when you would have hunted to see. It would have been very sketchy close to the end, but it would have pulled off the victory. Brandon's side of the ball. He did have Joe Burrow with the good game. Calvin Ridley there again. Uh, Travis Kelsey, obviously. He played, I want to just throw up here, what do we got? Patrick Taylor, who was a Packers running back, probably played him out of desperation, got 1.7 points, and then he was waived. Didn't play Kyron Williams. He probably tried to play Aaron Jones on Monday and then had to pull the plug and go with whoever was available. He was very resourceful when you look at it that way, but... 1.7 1.7 points. He probably didn't think it was going to be the difference. And obviously it still wouldn't have mattered, but it definitely helped out when it ended up being a close game there. Brandon improves to three and two Cole falls to three and two, both currently playoff teams right now. Third matchup in group C Anthony, unfortunately is still searching for victory. Number one, he falls to Jason 120.46 to 103.86. Taking a look at the breakdown here. Jason played James Conner, who's now going to have to be replaced, but led the way by the two Miami wide receivers, Tyreek Hill's 28, Jalen Waddle's 12, David Montgomery putting up a 19, and Sam Laporta with 18. Interesting how you have a couple of stacks here. I mean, you have the two Detroit Lions and the Lions defense, if you want to count that. You have the two Miami wide receivers with Hill and Waddle, and you actually have a Houston stack in the two flexes with Damian Pierce and Tank Dell. Very sketchy way to play fantasy, but this week at work, putting up 120 points. Looking at Anthony's side of the ball, he had a good game from Josh Allen here. Ramondre Stevenson just couldn't do it in that wide receiver two spot. He's been looking for some wide receiver help. C.D. Lamb didn't help with the 6.9, and Robert Woods only got four and a half there. Did have the Brees Hall breakout, but depth has been the problem for Anthony so far. We'll see how much he can find. Seeing that Cooper Cup's coming back too, he hopefully has a little bit of reinforcements help coming there. Hunter Renfro hasn't quite been the guy. Drake London hopefully continues to break out for Anthony there. He's still got a team that's going to put up some wins, and even if he cannot bring it all the way back to a playoff berth, every win makes a difference as the wild card the fi- at least one spot, depending on how many repeat champions we have, if we have any repeat champions, at least one spot getting into the Couch Champs World Cup is going to be based on win percentage. So any win you can get does matter. Okay, moving on to matchup number four in Group C. This is actually the highest score of the week. I wasn't sure if it was that matchup in week in Group A. Jim, 183.42 beating David's 95.46. 
that one and I, I interesting here i already see it here scroll down he is he, we have david here as a member of the i played dj Moore in lost club not a lot of people on that i know i saw that going around a little bit on social media 45 points from him ended up being pretty much half of the points his team scored and then if you look at jim's on the other side here he had a lot of breakouts with the Hertz 27, ETN's 34, Chase's 44, Kittle's 26, Jacoby Myers 17. He basically stacked up all of those, probably 70% of those guys who really had the big breakout games this week. Nothing you could do with just DJ Moore on the other side. Kirk Cousins and the Packers defense, the only other two to break 10 on david's side so he falls to three and two jim up to two and three and actually into second place so far in group c one more game to go we got mikey b pulling off the victory over doug doug falling to three and two he was the highest scoring team in the league through the first three weeks so he's starting to struggle now the last few mike on the other side he fall he jumps to three and two with this victory Looking at the, the stats here a little bit, he did play Jared Goff and Stephon Diggs. Darren Waller, who had a 12.6-point game, solid considering how he's been so far. Isaiah Pacheco's 12, he's pup, he put in a touchdown. No real super big breakout players on this. I mean, Diggs did put up 20, but just an overall pretty consistent performance out of Mike. And then on Doug's side of the ball... He just had a lot of those guys that you wanted to play, but just didn't quite do it. Brandon Ayuk, Jerry Judy got eight. He did salvage that a little bit at the lot at the end of the game because he was only, I think, like at two points going into the fourth quarter. Tony Pollard, the Cowboys were so far behind. James Cook just couldn't quite get it going over there in London. Had a Chan who in the flex he did get 21 before he got hurt, but we'll see how he can replace that 21 on his bench. And he was forced to play Alan Lazard already. Most of that's because he had the Chargers on by with Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler there. So those two definitely are going to help him as well as T Higgins coming back. Still a team to be reckoned with as he continues. He did get the bye weeks out of the way a little bit early. Check out the standings before we get out of here. Josh, obviously in the lead still at four and one. He is alone. Every other playoff team at three and two. We got Jim, Mike, Brandon, Doug, and Cole, I am right behind them all at two and three with a couple other teams there as well. Very close game. I'm sure we're going to see this start to shake out a little bit and start to clear up as we move on. But a couple of four and one and five and oh teams that are really starting to break out a little bit here. Let me switch my screen back now. We have one more thing before we get out of here. Why don't we do the world's fastest Thursday night preview? All right, Thursday Night Football features the Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs this week. All eyes on Travis Kelsey and not because of Taylor Swift this time. Because he is dealing with injury, he did go from a did not practice on Monday to a limited participant in practice on Tuesday, and it does appear that he is going to go. This is the game where you play all your Chiefs because the Broncos have been absolutely horrible, historically horrible pace on defense. The thing that really stinks is there's just not a lot of Chiefs to play. So you're playing Kelsey. You're playing Mahomes. You can definitely play Pacheco this week if you've been someone who's kind of been in and out of your lineup. Then that wide receiver, like, they're all just so hit or miss. Um, I did mention you can add Rishi Rice if you want to try to get a stab at someone who is, you know, a, a high variance kind of wide receiver. He might be someone if you're desperate with buys or injuries, you could take a shot on, but good chance that he could still bust. Um, obviously Kadarius Tony is always the target that everyone likes to grab because of the name, but he can never seem to stay healthy. He is actually a full participant on their injury report. So he should be good to go, but not someone I want to put in my lineup. I think if it's anybody at wide receiver for the chiefs, it's probably Rishi rice Broncos side of the ball. Their only real big injury to watch is Javante Williams. He's a limited participant in practice on Monday, but I don't know if I would play him anyway. Because Jaleel McLaughlin already put in three three or four touchdowns in the first five weeks of the season as a rookie. He's playing well. 
And even if Javante is close, I don't see them rushing him back. He may not even be active. Or if he is active, I would not be shocked if he's somebody who just kind of comes in and gets a couple of carries, and that's about it. I think that about wraps up our Thursday night. But why don't we get ourselves out of here? Thank you for listening in to our bonus episode of the Couch Jams podcast. Reminder, our normal episode with the group comes on Friday, and we're going to break down every NFL game. So for myself and the rest of the Couch GMs, we will see you all later this week.